everyone, welcome back to my channel. Quinn here as always. And in this video, I wanna to talk to you guys about setting goals and making sure you achieve them. So I know that in the new year of every year, people always set new goals for themselves, but after a couple weeks or even a couple months, people just sort of ignore them and stop trying to achieve them because they're either too hard or they don't know how to start properly. So now that we're a couple months into 2021, I thought I'd talk about how to make sure you can achieve those goals with some strategies I'll talk about. Now, everything I talk about is definitely not a one size fits all strategy, but I'm hoping that at least you can take some of the ideas I give in this video and sort of mold them to your goals and what you need. Because I know a lot of you are in the same boat I was, or I am now even, uh, with trying to accomplish certain goals and a little unsure of how to get there. Now your goals can be small, big, short term, long term, really anything because the, these strategies really do apply to whatever uh, kinds of goals you're setting. Now even for myself, this video is very personal because I too struggle with setting goals and chasing my dreams uh, and even achieving them because I do find it hard to start and figure out what the right steps are to get there. When I was in high school, I had a very clear idea of what my goals and aspirations were. And then when I went to university to pursue those goals, I really realized that it just wasn't the path for me. So I found myself very stuck and a little bit nervous to even set new goals for myself because again, I was unsure if I was going to be able to achieve them. So if you feel that you were in a similar boat as I was just earlier this year, hopefully some of the tips and strategies I talk about in this video will be really helpful for you and your life. Now before we start, make sure to go smash the like button and subscribe to my channel so I can continue making videos just like this. And I'd love for you guys just to support my channel more so again, I can keep pursuing my goals. But let's jump in right now. So the first thing you wanna start with when you have a goal in mind is to work backwards and make sure you're writing everything down. Keep a journal or a notebook so that you can write everything down by hand and make sure that you're getting everything in your brain onto the paper. So at least you have it there if you ever wanna go back to ones you haven't started yet. It doesn't have to look pretty or make sense to anyone but yourself, but as long as those words are on the paper, then you don't have to worry about forgetting them. We're just like computers where if you use up all the storage on your hard drive, then you have to start deleting files when you need to add more information. So we wanna make sure that when you are coming up with cool ideas or goals for yourself, either now or in the future, you're not forgetting about them or forgetting the steps that you've already come up with in your head for them. And then sometimes even just seeing it sort of out in front of you gives you an idea of where you want to go from there. Okay, so once you've sort of got your idea, have somewhere to write them all down or have already written them down, then you need to start working backwards from that main goal. Now, I've had trouble with this step as well because sometimes you don't even know what that big goal is yet. Now, the best way to get around this hurdle is not by thinking about an exact detailed goal quite yet. It's about sort of structuring your lifestyle if the goal is about your career or your future. You can start thinking about things like where you want to live, who your friends are going to be, what kind of day-to-day -day things do you see yourself doing? For example, do you want to wake up really early and work early in the day? Do you want to get up and have a workout before you go to work? Now these are all just work examples, but they definitely help you get the ball rolling of where you see yourself in the future and how you see your sort of life playing out. Now, for example, let's say you're the kind of person who wants to live in a big house with a pool somewhere warm, you wanna have friends over after work and have a barbecue. Let's say that's just your normal day. You need to think about things like how much money are you gonna need for this nice big house with a pool? What kinds of jobs are gonna allow you to take the evenings off and relax? as well as what kinds of jobs will make you enough money to get there. These are all things that you start thinking about once you have that goal in mind or that lifestyle you want in mind. Now after you've done this step, you can actually have a little bit more fun with things because you can start just thinking about things that interest you or stuff you may wanna pursue but aren't really sure yet. 
Maybe you're interested in politics and you want to become a city councillor in your district. Or you like the idea of starting your own clothing brand. Or maybe even you want to travel the world and you think doing a job that allows you to do that is fit for you. Any of these ideas, big or small, are never a waste of time to come up with because you never know what path you're going to go down and let's say you have goals for a bunch of different ones, then you always have something to strive for no matter which way you turn. And if it motivates you more to come up with ideas, every single billion dollar business started just from one person's small idea. Amazon, Apple, Tesla, all of these were just someone's small idea and they just happened to pursue them and they were motivated enough to go through with these ideas and actually make a huge successful business out of. Now I'm not saying you have to be the next, you know, Google, but it just goes to show you that no idea is a bad idea. Everyone has different things that drives them to do what they do, but you do have to put some thought into the path you want to take to achieve those goals. Now, again, not every goal is about your career. For example, someone could want to run a marathon or even someone might want to get all A's in their next semester. All of these goals are awesome. If they are helpful to your life and make you feel good as a person, then by all means, please go and try to achieve them. Just make sure that you're writing all of them down so you aren't forgetting anything and you're starting to make at least the first couple steps along that path just to get you going so you can track that progress. So this is the spot where most people feel unmotivated and even this is where you see a lot of people stop trying to achieve their goals because at this stage, sure, they've written all their goals down, they have them ready to go, they have their first steps in place. However, they feel that their steps are unmanageable and it's too stressful to continue. But in order to start achieving those goals, you have to start somewhere and I'm going to give you some tips on the best way to get rolling with it. Like I've mentioned a lot in this video already, you need to start with small steps. It's one thing to say, I want to be a successful lawyer one day, or I want to own my own store, but it's a completely other thing to actually start doing it. So to avoid making it seem super daunting, you want to splice it into really small segments. Now the best way to do this, at least for me, is making a timeline for that big goal and then making even smaller ones within that timeline. For the purpose of this example, we'll say that your timeline is 10 year. You want to achieve whatever goal it is in 10 years. So then you want to take it down a notch and say, okay, in order to get to this goal in 10 years, what do I need to do within five years? Maybe you need to go to university. Maybe you need to get an entry job in your industry. There are so many different options for your timeline and what to do within that timeline. You just want to make sure you keep making it more detailed and more in detailed until you've got steps that range anywhere from a couple months to a year. Make them very small and attainable goals so you don't become overwhelmed by them, but significant enough that you're still making progress. Just like I mentioned before, in my pursuit of real estate, I'm sticking to small goals like finishing school, getting a job, selling my first home. All of these make it much more manageable instead of just saying become a real estate agent. Now something super, super important about those steps and your goal is making sure it is all very measurable. For example, if your goal is to be healthier, maybe try rewording it to say, okay, I want to be healthier. So in order to do that, my goal is to have, you know, this much protein in every meal, this many servings of vegetable in every meal, and maybe limit yourself to one or two desserts a week. You can already see just by me saying that instead of be healthier, it's very easy to see where you go from there in order to reach those goals. It also keeps you honest so that if you don't reach those small steps towards your goal, then you know for next time you have to be better and you have to do more. So that's the kind of thing you should start doing in order to reach those goals and make sure those goals are measurable. Now that we have a good solid plan of how to, one, figure out what your goals are, two, make sure you're keeping all of your ideas and writing them down, making sure they're measurable as well and having small enough steps to make it manageable, you need ways to motivate yourself to do them as well. Now some motivating strategies work better than others,
but it really depends what kind of person you are and what drives you to work hard. But for me personally, I think that the pleasure driver is the best strategy to motivate oneself. Some people say the pain driver is effective, which basically means that you have a consequence for not achieving your steps in the allotted time or your goals. But for me, I don't like to sort of include another stress factor into achieving goals. So I like to stay away from this pain driver but I do like the pleasure driver, which is the exact opposite, which is you actually reward yourself for achieving your steps and your goals. So let's say for me, I finished my schooling by August, then I've achieved that first step on the road to becoming a real estate agent. So maybe as a reward, I'll go out to a nice dinner or, you know, buy myself a nice treat. Those are the kinds of things that motivate me to work hard because I actually get something positive out of it at the end. So I would definitely stick with the pleasure driver over the pain one, but it's really up to you. But I hope that my advice at least help you guys start thinking about your goals, what kinds of things you need to do to get there, and even motivate you to start actually achieving them. But thank you guys for watching this video and make sure before you leave to go hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos just like this.